Hey all, Bill Greenberg with PhoneScholar.com. Today is Thursday, January 13th, 2011, and I am very sorry about the videos yesterday. I had a power outage here. I don't know what had happened. We had very, very high winds, so I'm going to say, and I thought it was knocked out for just a few seconds, but and then everything came back on, then it went out, and so I just didn't get, uh, there just wasn't enough time to do everything, so I do apologize for that, but I'm up and running today, and here we go. So here's a brief summary of what we got on the website today to see all the articles, and they're great articles today, because I wrote one of them. Go to www.phonescholar.com, and any questions, blog questions at phonescholar.com, and of course comments on the YouTube channel. So here we go, CES 11 tablets worth watching, and this is all tablets today, just to let you know. Uh, so here we go. Um, so basically, uh, Computer World put out an article saying the 11 top tablets that they thought were at CES, ones that are worth watching and coming out and ready to go. Uh, what they did is they compared what some of the differences are, obviously are going to be between them. One is going to be price. Of course, none of these are out yet, so we don't know any of the pricing, but uh, some of them are trying to break the $400 barrier, which Sprint actually did today with the Galaxy Tab. I'll get into that. Um, and uh, stuff like that. So price, uh, screen size, anywhere from 7 inch to 10 inch, or the iPad, which is 9.7 inches. The platform that's running, Android, Apple OS, Palm OS, because HP has been talking about stuff. Uh, all so the different platforms that are going to be out there, and then of course the user interface and apps. These are going to what's going to make the difference into do I buy this one or this one. So the 11 that they mentioned were the BlackBerry Playbook, the Galaxy Tab. The Cisco CS, which I didn't do a lot on, it's a 7-inch uh, unit with Wi-Fi that's going to be available on Verizon Wireless. The Motion CL900, which is a Windows 7 uh, unit, which is going to be about $1,000 in Intel Atom. It's really a PC tablet with the um, PC writer, the tablet writer. So it's more in the PC line than the actual tablet lines. Uh, the Motorola Zoom, the LG G Slate, the Toshiba tablet, the Dell Streak, the HP tablet, which again was not shown at CES, but supposedly there's going to be an announcement early next month uh, from Sprint and HP that they are going to have a unit using the Palm OS. Uh, the Lenovo LePad, which again is more like a PC tablet, 10.1, uh, it runs Froyo. It's going to have um, multiple, multiple uh, opportunity, multiple uh, load up with Windows, so it'll have Windows and Android, just like one of the ViewSonic ones that I showed you last week. Um, and it actually serves both as a monitor or detachable tablet, so it's kind of going that way. Um, the ASE or EEE -E -E Slate EP121, which again I didn't talk about, uh, that's a Windows 7, it's a 12 inch. Right now it's on pre-order pre on Amazon for 1100 bucks. Intel Core i5 per processor, so again, it's more uh, going towards the PC not into the tablet, but I also did put a link for the Amazon pre-order site if you want to get uh, specs and demos and information on it, so you can check it out there. And then, of course, they're talking about the iPad 2, which, again, wasn't shown at CES. We're hopefully expecting an announcement maybe at Macworld, or although Apple's never at Macworld anymore, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, But, you know, Steve Jobs, they're, they're loving to do that. So, there you go. Next, Toshiba... Oh, excuse me, and I did mention... Did in the beginning of the mention, uh, there's a couple of others, the ViewSonic ones and the Elo City tablets, which are seem like really, really fantastic tablets. And I have video of those. If you go into the category section under tablets, videos from last week for those, if you didn't get a chance to see them. And then, of course, the Notion Atom Inc., which uh, I have uh, on this or on this today information on. So there we go. Next, Toshiba tablet versus Microsoft Zoom. And one of my readers, Philippa7, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, asked me if I could do a, an article comparing the Toshiba tablet to the Motorola Zoom, which I did. So there you go. I wrote it all out myself. I'm very proud of that. I'm having fun with that. And I'm hopefully going to be doing that a whole lot more, especially if I can create uh, contacts with these manufacturers and carriers to get the, the units in my hand so I can actually do reviews also. But basically, they both offer... A dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 1 gigahertz processors, 10.1 inch multi touch HD displays, 2 megapixel camera in front, 5 megapixel camera in back, and they both are going to run Honeycomb when available. The big difference is the Toshiba, first of all, has a removable back, 
which I don't know why this is such an issue in the fact that nobody can, nobody else is doing this, but this way you can replace the battery. So if your battery conks out or goes bad, you don't have to send your unit in, wait for it to be repaired, get it back and be whatever it is, three to five days or three to five weeks, whatever they're doing with it, number one. Uh, this will also give them the availability to have multiple colors, so it should be a really cool thing. The added advantage with the Toshiba, since it's a TV company, they're adding in the Toshiba Resolution, T T Resolution Plus and also the Toshiba uh, sound enhancements. So side by side, the colors and the enhancements, the, the Resolution Plus actually takes a regular definition picture and makes it look like a high def picture. Really cool. Automatically adjusts colors, automatically adjusts contrasts, things like that. The sound the enhancement is gonna give a boost to the audio. So being a, a TV company, again, a little bit of an advantage that way. The uh, It also has a lot more ports. It has both a mini and regular USB ports, stuff like that. The advantage of the Motorola is number one, it's gonna be out first. They're expecting within the next couple of months, they've already announced it's gonna be with the Verizon and it does have a dual uh, LED, LCD, fl LED flash, sorry, um, which it doesn't appear that the Toshiba tablet has at this time. And it is also upgradable to the 4G LTE as soon as that rolls out into the tablets. Um, so there you go. Now, my recommendation is, because the Toshiba tablet's not even gonna be out for another six months or so, so when that comes out, then we can compare them actually side by side in our hand. But then again, the majority of all these other ones that I mentioned just before are also going to be out probably around that same time frame or if not before. So it's going to get this summer is just going to be the confusing summer of tablets. And again, it's going to come back to what I said back in the other article, price, um, availability, because that could be an issue screen size, things like that. So I'm guessing in about six months, I'm gonna do another one of these with probably 40 of these units, who knows how many, but uh, it should be interesting. But Philippa, I hope that helps you out. If it doesn't, sorry, if it does, let me know. Next, Notion Inc. Adam, hands-on preview and promo video. I put two videos on there, one's a preview, a hands-on uh, from Engadget that, at the CES show. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know they were out in the parking lot, otherwise I would have done it myself, so I do apologize for that. And then there's also a promo video which kinda it just helps out, but it's a really, really nice unit. A couple of things it does run, again, the dual core Integra NVIDIA 2 processor. Uh, it has a 10.1 inch screen now. It's running gingerbread, believe it or not, 2.3. It's not running honeycomb, it's not running Fourier, it's running gingerbread, which is pretty interesting, but it was, it was really fast. But the cool thing about it, it has the Eden user interface. And what that does is when you look on the screen, there's three panels that have things. So you can have like Facebook, Twitter, and your browser and use them kind of all at the same time. And then when you click on the browser, it opens up the screen to the entire browser. And then on the side, there's actually tabs on the browser like in my in uh, in Explorer or in Firefox where you can click on other browsers, but it keeps them up there like this one does. And you just click on that and it goes to that and click on that and it goes to that. And it was running really, really fast. It also has a little round on the top or on the side, whichever way you hold it, grip. So when you grip it and you're reading, it looks really good. So it looks like a really great unit. Uh, they did talk about when Honeycomb comes out, it's probably going to be upgradable to that pretty quickly. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. There's no price or anything. Excuse me, there was a pre-order on it. And you know what? I don't have the price. I'm sorry. But there was a pre-order. They've already sold out of the pre-order. So that's not available right now. Um, but again, this looks like it's going to be another one, a heavy-duty competing unit. And those that Eden user interface looks really, really neat. So check out the videos. I think you'll enjoy it. And lastly, just got this Sprint Drop Galaxy Tab down to three hundred bucks, two ninety nine ninety nine. And the article says it undercuts everyone but U.S. Cellular. But U.S. Cellular's two hundred dollar offer it was a promo offer that's no longer available. So if you want the least expensive. Galaxy Tab, you go to Sprint for $299.99 with a two-year contract. Now, Verizon has dropped the price down to 500 bucks with no contract, so if you want to go that way, you can go that way too, and that's an anticipation, and they already said at CES that there's a newer version of that coming out for Verizon for 4G with a much faster processor and better cameras, so that's probably why they're dropping the price. I would venture to say that when that new one comes out, this one could come down also to $300 with no contract. It depends how much Samsung drops it, because again, that's what's called subsidies. And what happens is Verizon right now, if they sell it on no contract, then they're probably charging about the same price they pay for it. If they charge on contract and know they have two years of service from you and you're not going to leave them anytime soon or you have to pay whatever that subsidy is to make it up, 
that's when they drop the price. So, prime example, let's say they want to sell it for 300 bucks, they're buying it for 500. They sell it on no contract, they, they make as much money on it as they can. They don't lose money on the unit, they make as much money as they can on the service until you're willing to lose it. But if you bet, get it for $300, let's say in six months you want to get rid of it, well, they're going to get charged an early termination fee of around $285. They're still making money overall, plus the six months of service they got from it. So I'm sorry if that's a little confusing, but there you go. That's all I got for today. Tomorrow I'm going back into the phones. Again, uh, coming up with a couple of things. And I'm going to do a comparison tomorrow uh, for somebody else that asked me also of the four LTE Verizon phones that were offered at CES. So I hope you enjoy that. That's all I got for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.